So The Simpsons have run for 33 seasons and have produced over 700 episodes since its release in 1989. I wanted to take a look at The Simpsons as a whole and see how it has changed over its insane run. Okay, so I've been working on this video a while and I wish I could have gotten it done sooner. Originally, I was going to watch every episode of the series to do this, but I have a job. So instead, I looked at the highest rated episodes of each season on IMDb because I figured if I'm going to get a look at the whole series, it should be their best work. I went with audience ratings instead of critical because that just felt right to me. I also watched a few other episodes from each season that I won't be talking about because I watched them just to confirm my thoughts and theories about the seasons as a whole and because I honestly just love the show. I wanted to group up the episodes in some way so it's not just going over one episode after another and to do that I decided to go with the different showrunners. I don't know if that will be the right way to do this yet because I haven't watched all of this yet. I need to be writing and editing this as I go or it'll never get done so I'll watch these blocks, write up the script for it, and move on to the next. Maybe these showrunners will provide clear looks at how the different eras of the show have existed, but it's hard to say because there are many aspects that go into a series production, not just that one person. There's only one way to find out, and that's to get started. Let's do this. Okay, so the highest rated episodes of these two seasons are the premiere episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, and surprisingly enough, not Bart Gets an F, but Lisa Substitute. These two episodes paint a certain picture of The Simpsons. Extremely grounded, especially compared to stuff we're going to get later on. These scripts could have been shot live action with little to no issue. The Simpsons are fairly well-defined characters, though they definitely get more depth as they go. The Christmas episode is Homer as his best as a person, doing a weird job to do right by his family and making mistakes along the way. Also, I just want to point out that Flanders, as he's first introduced here, clearly wasn't fleshed out much beyond being a foil for Homer. Someone as hardcore Christian as him would not have Christmas lights that just say Xmas. That's not a critique, because this is just the first episode. I just thought it was fun. Lisa's story in her episode not being able to connect to others because she's smart and having to look outside the family for understanding is essentially how the series tells a Lisa story. This episode is the template for it and I think the most emotionally resonant version that I've seen. And that's definitely a strength of these seasons. It's heartfelt character-driven storytelling. You can feel the show grow from season one to two. The writing gets a bit tighter. This series I've always found to be known for being very joke dense and you don't get that in the Christmas special but you can feel more of it in Lisa Substitute. The season 3 episode Flaming Moe's is well it's amazing. The comedy is top notch. The supporting characters especially the titular Moe are extremely well fleshed out by this point. That's one thing I love about this series is how many strong recognizable characters there are, each with their own type of humor. A Burns joke would never work if it was given to Krusty, for example. This episode, to me, is really what The Simpsons feel is. The amount of jokes they fit into one scene really defines how I think of the series. Everything is a gag and everything lands. This episode is the first of what I keep referring to in my notes as a stunt episode where they have some combination of a huge premise and or a celebrity cameo. Not like the way Dustin Hoffman was in Lisa Substitute, but uncredited. Stunts have full credits and they're often playing themselves or a character based on their persona. It should really be both to be a stunt episode, but there aren't really any rules here. Aerosmith is in this one. I also noticed that while this episode still has a nice ending, it feels less sappy. Like, Mo and Homer make up at the end, but it doesn't try to pull on the heartstrings in the same way as the first few. Marge vs. the Monorail is exactly what I was talking about as a stunt episode. Between the Leonard Nimoy cameo and the huge concept, including a classic Simpsons musical number. I think there must be a direct connection between The Simpsons 
and the appreciation I have for musicals now. This episode is really about Springfield as a whole. It centers itself on the family, but it really is about the town. The Simpsons love a movie parody, and season 5's second episode is just a perfect example of that. Sideshow Bob's third episode really sets the stage for how his stories are told going forward. They use the plot of Cape Fear to have him try and take revenge on Bart for ruining his plans twice before. Pretty much all of his episodes that come after this either do that again, or subvert our expectations of that. It's a really solid episode, gave us one of the great Simpsons memes, and I'm sure it's a lot of people's introduction to the movie Cape Fear. I know it was for me. Not much else to say here, the music number slaps. Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1 is the season 6 finale, leading straight into season 7. I'm going to talk about both episodes here, because I mean why not? This story itself is a general parody of big TV cliffhangers, most specifically Dallas, and they do it quite well. The episode sets up everyone in the town with motivation, both in general, but also give extra play to a lot of the regulars. They do that really well, balancing off all these different storylines and making it all understandable while going from one to the other at breakneck speeds. It works so well as an episode of its own, not just as a parody, and that's because of how well-defined these characters have all become over the six seasons that have come before it. The second part hits a lot of the hallmarks of The Simpsons. Like I said, it's a pop culture parody with a second Twin Peaks parody in there for good measure. We get a cameo and a musical number, not to mention the episode has some great character moments. My favorite of those is how Sideshow Mel is the one that proves Smithers' innocence, because he's a character who's very clever, who usually never gets to show that kind of stuff off, because it's often given to Lisa to be the one to figure out everything. Also, if you want to um actually me that part 2 is in season 7, first off, who cares? Second off, these episodes were in production at the same time in the David Merkin era, so this still technically fits into the arbitrary rules I came up with. Also, who cares? So these next two episodes are big landmarks in the Simpson history, season 7's for being the origin of steamed hams, and season 8's for being my favorite. One of the things I think The Simpsons excels at is episodes that are made up of shorter stories like The Treehouse of Horrors, and don't worry, we're covering some of those. 22 short films about Springfield is in my opinion the perfect version of this. Not only is the steamed hams the ultimate meme, but the other shorts work really well too. The episode was inspired by and has a whole bunch of references to Pulp Fiction, but watching it now I couldn't help but think about Richard Linklater's first film Slacker. The way many of the stories drift into one another feels much more like Slacker than Tarantino's film. You Only Move Twice, on the other hand, is a story-driven episode, following the family's move when Homer gets a job, running a plant for a James Bond villain. And it's my favorite. The way Homer just doesn't realize what's going on around him feels so perfect for his character, and I much prefer it to the rage ball he's often portrayed as. I also love that Hank's Scorpio is more than just a Bond villain. He really sums up what I think about a great Simpsons guest star, combining jokes that push the story forward with some great absurdity. And of course, just the fact that Homer is willing to give up this fantastic job for his family is the Homer that we all love. It's what makes him endearing and not just some oaf. So, most people point to the principal and the pauper as the end of the Simpsons' golden era, and that is an episode in season 9. Now we're not going to cover that in this video, obviously, but we are still at a turning point here. Every episode we've covered so far has been either good or great, and from season 3 on, it really has felt like the golden age, the nostalgic core of The Simpsons. I'm hoping this section isn't as big a dip as we are foreshadowing here, in part because this is the first time we have a showrunner for more than two seasons. So you're in the hot seat, Mike. Okay. The City of New York vs. Homer Simpson feels like an early season episode in concept, fairly grounded, focused on Homer's misfortune, but with a more modern flair for the dramatics 
especially in the third act. This episode is a great way to highlight how the show has evolved. Homer in the premiere is down on his luck, making mistakes, but at his core driven to do right by his family. In this episode, however, Homer is far more aggressive, dumber, and overall feels like a completely different character in terms of what drives him and how he deals with the world around him. Also, I don't think this is the best episode of the season. I'd give that to Lisa the Skeptic. <laughs> the IMDB users are just wrong. Homer getting a new job is classic narrative trope for the series, and Mayor to the Mob is a great example of it. The season 10 episode has some great Simpsons classics, a celebrity cameo, a musical number, and some great absurdity. Seriously, the rat milk creeped me out so much as a kid. Also, I did a production of Guys and Dolls in high school and was disappointed to find out we're just a bunch of crazy guys and dolls wasn't in it. Look be a lady does slap though. Okay, behind the laughter. Season 11 is a season built on big stunt episodes, and this one is the biggest. The joke density in this episode is insane. It does not let up. Like, I didn't count the jokes or anything, but it feels like an all-time high to me. It gives it a powerful, powerful rewatch value, catching all the little details you might have missed. I love stuff like that. Side note. This episode taught me the phrase, shit or get off the pot. So The Simpsons is educational. I also had a thought that the old VH1 mini documentary shows this episode is parodying are really just YouTube videos now, right? Finally, Trilogy of Error is another multi-story episode, but with a fun twist. Pulling inspiration from films like Go and Run Lola Run for its structure, this episode is lighter on how many jokes you're hit with at a single time, but as the story unfolds, the jokes intertwine as well as the plot in a really fun way, and in some ways might be the smartest episode. It's got great momentum to it, and is really, really fun the whole way through. So even though season 9 is viewed as that turning point in The Simpsons history, this run of the best episodes really proves that just because it's not firing 100% at all cylinders doesn't mean it's still not really strong as a whole. So I lost my job, and it's only really relevant to mention here because, and it is relevant, I do think it's relevant, because we're going into a new section of the video. These are episodes that I am somewhat familiar with, but less so. It is not the golden age of the show that we've been talking about. And I'm going to try to keep being impartial about this, but who knows where this will go. I might end up being really hard on the next slew of episodes because I'm upset. But this might also be good for me, you know, watching a comedy that I find comfortable and familiar. Even episodes that aren't as good might be what I need, and I might be easy on it. I don't know where these episodes are going to go yet, I haven't watched them. I just wanted to lay that all out there before we went into the next section, in case you're wondering, hmm, he's going really easy on these bad episodes, or oh, he's going really hard on these episodes that are still pretty funny. This is why. There's no such thing as being truly impartial when talking about media. Anyways, let's go. Al Jean co-ran seasons 3 and 4, and now he's back, and nothing can possibly go wrong, right? Season 13's Papa's Got a Brand New Badge is another Homer Gets a New Job episode, and it's become such a trope to this series that the episode has a scene calling it out. 
The episode has some great lines in it though, like they're stealing the tire fire, and I feel like a big man pushing that kid around. And I gotta say, Marge is way too supportive, and this episode really highlights that. I also find it odd that in the last act, they really ramp things up, escalating it to a life or death situation, and then it just ends. A bit of an odd choice, maybe done as a joke, but I'm not sure if it landed and I need to point that out. Next we have our first Treehouse of Horror. I was surprised it took 14 seasons to get to one, as it is one of the most iconic aspects of the show. All three of these shorts are fun, like a lot of fun. They are more silly than horror, unlike some of the earlier episodes that play horror parodies really hard into a comedic direction. That said, this one is still a lot of fun. So for episode 15, we have another Treehouse of Horror, but this one hits different. It's one I've seen a few times, like all the episodes we've covered so far, but unlike those, I only remembered one joke that they made when it was happening. This episode was still funny, but much less, dare I say, iconic? I do. I do dare say less iconic. Don't Fear the Roofer, aka the Ray Romano episode, highlights the worst aspect of Homer as a character. He's neglectful to his family, and his friends can't trust him, but they try to play it as sympathetic. The episode feels like a movie parody, but as far as I know, not to anyone in particular. It feels to me like a general parody of early 2000s thrillers in what they're doing with the narrative, but without a main film guiding it, it feels a lot less focused to me. It still landed some good jokes, but overall was fairly weak. Season 17 gave us the seemingly never-ending story, and it is a step up. The structure, having several stories nested one within another, is a lot of fun. I also want to point out that this one really highlights the supporting cast. Not only does it give them all a chance to shine comedically, but it gives us subversions of them. The most obvious is Snake as an Indiana Jones style adventurer before his life of crime, but even letting Burns save Lisa from a perceived threat by risking himself fits into that as well. The 24 parody episode from season 18 works really well. They nail the style of the show as well as the breakneck pace and the way it throws twists at you. It also uses the Simpsons characters very well and does a good job at taking the seemingly unrelated Marge storyline and tying it into the climax. Not a ton to say here other than I was assuming it was going to be much worse than it actually is because it's really good. Now at this point, there's something I want to talk about before moving on, so we're going to take a quick break here. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Alright, so it's at this point in the timeline that the Simpsons movie takes place, and I thought it'd be a good moment to take a break and talk about something that I've been noticing. Also, I'm not going to be covering the movie in this just because I don't think it really fits in what we're going for here. So I'll save that for another video. I've got to stop promising videos in other videos. So what I want to talk about here is flanderization. If you don't know what it is, it's a trope named from The Simpsons about how characters as they are written and as they evolve as shows go on, become more and more caricatures of the forms they began as. They go from someone with quirks to just those quirks personified. Now the name obviously takes itself from Ned Flanders, but all the characters on The Simpsons really go through this. And I want to talk specifically how it affects Homer and Marge. These characters begin as a loving couple who have the differences that they have to work out throughout the course of an episode here and there. It's the drama of the show, but as flanderization takes its course, Homer becomes more and more of both an infantile, man-child buffoon, and just a ball of rage and ugliness. Now that being said, if this version of Homer is the one you prefer, I'm not sitting here saying that you're wrong for liking that. 
I just don't think that this is the best interpretation of the character, but as time has gone on, this is kind of the one that we're stuck with. And because of that, Marge, a character who is forgiving and loving and a bit of a pushover, becomes the doormat that he just walks all over and who threatens to leave him but never will, and then they get back together over and over and over again. Now, the couple have always had their troubles, that's part of who they are, but as the series has progressed, it's just become more and more obvious that Homer just sucks. He's a bad husband, and Marge should leave him, honestly. So, I'm no longer feeling warm and fuzzy when they get back together. I'm feeling bad for her. And that sucks. They keep giving her more and more things that she is great at, showing all the wasted potential she has being with Homer. But every time they get back together, it's a victory. And that sucks now. It used to be, oh, she's choosing love above all else. But now it feels more like she's choosing to not give herself the chance she deserves. I really found this a sore thumb sticking out in the midst of these last few episodes, despite the fact that there's some great stuff in them, and I'm worried it's just going to get worse and worse as the show goes on. Anyways, back to it. Season 19's episode is... Season 19's... The episode for season 19 is... <sighs> okay. I'll do the movie. I don't think I've seen this since the theaters. Maybe once. So while I know the movie in broad strokes, this was a decently fresh viewing for me. And I was pleasantly surprised. The movie may not be as good as The Golden Age, but the writing is as good, if not better, than some of the stuff we got a little bit before this. The jokes were landing so well, and the plot just felt like a Simpsons episode, but with the larger scope you'd expect from a film. Albert Brooks playing the main villain was great, and unlike people I've seen online, I like that he's not replaying Hank Scorpio. Because if this movie was built around a callback character, it would feel cheaper. I do agree that the president should have just been Wolf Castle though. I wish Lisa had more to do in this episode, being that it is an environmental story. I get that there's only so much runtime, but they could have made her work a bit better. Also, if they're gonna give her a love interest in the movie that we don't see very much because he's not around, then why not keep him around as a minor character in the show afterwards, you know? That's my biggest issue with the movie. It doesn't have a lasting impact on the series going forward. I think it would have made an excellent finale, mending Homer's relationship with Bart, Lisa finding a boyfriend who really understands her and what she's passionate about, and Marge learning to not blindly follow her husband anymore. So if you aren't going to end the series, at least make those moments matter. As I was saying, Marge leaving Homer in Alaska? It really works. Julie Kavner's performance was excellent, and the symbology of taping over their wedding video that she rescued from a burning fire, it really lands, despite it being kind of obvious and heavy-handed. If it had affected the series going forward, shifting their relationship and the dynamic between them, it would be perfect. But at the end of the day, it's a sitcom, so we have to soft reset everything after every episode. Alright, back to the show now. Season 19's episode is a parody of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind that kind of lands. What I appreciate about the episode and it's something that I think the show does very well when it does parody work, is that it's not just a recreation of the plot of a movie, but it creates something new from the same tools as the movie in question. This episode's execution, however, is lackluster. I think the season has episodes that should be ranked higher, like Any Given Sundance, The Debarded, or even when Ralph runs for president. All better episodes, in my mind. Next up, we have Sex Pies and Idiot Scrapes, and it's a much better episode. 
I enjoy Homer and Ned teaming up. That's always fun, some classic odd couple stuff, and they do a good job together here. Marge being conflicted finding out she's working at an erotic bakery is so fun, and I wish there was just more of it in the episode. It doesn't need it, I just want it. Also, the bakery owner should have been Colin from the movie's dad. Bring in more Colin. Ned's extended chase scene with Homer is fun, but the fact that they go with a parkour direction for it is less interesting than if they had gone with a classic chase motif, and I feel like that dates the episode a lot. So five seconds into watching Treehouse of Horror 20, my partner walked by and said, this sounds like modern Simpsons. Really highlighting how both the pacing of jokes and audio quality of the show has changed because it was just grunting sounds. Anyways, this is nowhere near the best Treehouse of Horror, but I will say that I really liked the Sweeney Todd parody because it was done as a stage play being performed in the episode, and not just a straight telling. They still have some fun ideas 21 years in. That's all I have to say about the episode. Season 22 gives us Angry Dad, the movie. It's a blatant callback episode, but I don't think it was a bad choice. Using Angry Dad to tell a Road to the Oscars style story makes sense instead of making an entirely new animated creation from the family. However, I don't think the episode is funny. The best part to me was seeing all the other shorts, mainly because I knew the stuff that was being referenced and I could be the Leo meme. That said, this is the first episode that got nothing bigger than a chuckle from me. It feels like a rehash of that Sundance episode they did like two seasons before. And it feels to me like what I assumed the movie would have been if they'd used Hank Scorpio in it. Holidays of Future Past is not the best future set episode that this series has done, but I still think it's a solid episode and doesn't just feel like a callback. The jokes were decent, but I think the character work, how they portrayed the future versions of them, worked out well. It wasn't just a rehash of what they had done in other episodes like this, and I really appreciate how they specifically portrayed Homer and how he's become a better grandfather than he ever was as a father. I think they handled Lisa and Marge's relationship well, although I would have preferred a Lisa who was a more career-driven character than one who just is also a mom. And I know you can be both, and I know she's both, and I get that, but I feel like one of the things The Simpsons is still stuck in is the idea of the nuclear family, and they kind of subvert that with Maggie, but then it's this whole thing where Everyone has to have kids at some point, and I'm just done with it. Still a solid episode, though. I just need to rant a little. Season 24's Treehouse of Horror really fell flat. I don't have much to say on it, honestly, other than the very straight parody of Paranormal Activity feels so extremely dated now. Biggest thing I have to mention here, though, is we are now going to dive into the seasons that I don't know anything about. This is the only crop where I've never seen a single episode from, so things might get weird. We'll see. Let's do this. Again. So we're doing the Lego episode. I remember hearing that it was happening back when it was coming out and I wanted to avoid it because it sounded just like a bad stunt to me. And I'm here to admit I was wrong. It had some surprisingly good jokes in it. And while there were some hiccups in it along the way, 
they pulled off the emotional end to it fairly well. It wasn't just jumping in on the LEGO Movie's success, and it felt like a real artistic endeavor. The Futurama crossover, on the other hand, was a lot less so in my opinion. I enjoy the jokes by the Futurama characters, but I think that's just because they felt more true to themselves and haven't been flanderized as much as the Simpsons cast have over the years. It all just felt a little forced, but I think it did a better job than the Family Guy crossover Simpsons had a few years ago, but that's because the Family Guy one is a Family Guy episode. Next up we have Barthood, the parody of Boyhood, obviously, and it didn't work for me. I see what they were getting at, but to me the emotional core fell flat, and because this episode was focusing on that emotional story, there were less jokes to make up for it, and because they created Bart's interest in bikes and the relationship he has in the episode with Grandpa only for this episode, it really doesn't feel connected to the series as a whole, and I think that's a missed opportunity. I did like the rotoscope couch gag referencing Plato's films like that, but not enough to make up for the episode overall. Okay, so the Boston set episode feels incredibly forced, like, so bad. I think moving to a rival town because you go to appreciate it could have worked a few seasons ago if they set it in Shelbyville, but all the Boston and the references to the Patriots references really weighed it down, making this episode a hard pass for me. Season 29's Flanders Ladder is an odd one. It feels like a good concept for a Treehouse of Horror segment, but stretched to a full episode. On the plus side, they were able to cover more ground than they would have if it was a single segment, but on the other hand, it felt light. It was neither emotional enough or had enough jokes to make up for it, existing in this weird conceptual middle ground. Baby, you can't drive my car. While I enjoyed it, I think I appreciated more than anything else. It lacked in big comedic moments overall, but I didn't mind it very much. It was a low-key character episode that in many ways felt like an older episode, though not as classic. It used our modern world better than any other episode I've seen. And most importantly, Homer and Marge worked so well together both in the narrative where they're working a job together and the way they're portrayed as characters. It's what I've been wanting to see since the movie. Season 31's The Way of the Dog felt like a finale to the show. The way it tied into the premiere episode, how it was a story where the whole family worked together without fighting, and the overly sentimental ending all felt like a nice conclusion to the series. Also, I'm a pets over people guy, so that plays into my views, but its sentimentality worked for me better than anything they've done in a long time. I'm honestly really disappointed that they didn't end it here, because watching it felt as close to that warm hug feeling you get from early Simpsons as I've gotten in a while from the show. So I'm not covering the current season because it's still going, so the last bar fighter is the last thing I'm covering in this video, and I'm kind of sad I watched it. I watched it directly after The Way of the Dog, and it made the episode look even worse. I think the John Wick parody must have worked better on paper, but I do not think it is executed well. It just felt, as I've said a few times here, forced. Though I will say this is the first time I heard the new Carl voice, and I think the actor does a good job. There were a few lines that I couldn't even tell it was a different person. Okay, so with all of this done, I have some thoughts. There's always a discussion about what the golden age of The Simpsons is. Some people say it's the first 
to like seventh season. Some say it's till the ninth or tenth. And I've got my thought on when it is for me. I think that the first three seasons, while really good, are finding the voice of the show. You can see that progression very easily. And because of that, I think that is sort of like a precursor. And then seasons four to 12 are the golden age. And I think that is a combination of just solid writing all the way through. Even the episodes people say aren't good or end the age, Principal and the Pauper. I think that fits in. And that is partially because of nostalgia, of course, but this is my golden age. And I'll fill in from there, uh, season 13 to like the movie is probably a good silver age if we wanna keep going with the comic talk. It's really solid stuff. And while not as good, still hits more than it misses. I don't think it gets into what people would call bad Simpsons until around season 21, but that's again, my taste. And that said, I don't think those later seasons that I just called bad are unwatchable. I think there's some good solid episodes throughout. And even the episodes that I've in this video have called bad are just bad by the standard we've set watching this show. I think there's always at least one or two good jokes there's never anything that like offends me as a viewer as being so bad in any way. It's just not the high heights that we have had. It's something that I would definitely throw on and watch if I just need something on in the background that wasn't too distracting. And that's something I wanted to touch on a little is the value of comfort shows because they are intrinsically important and whether that is you taking your favorite episodes of a show and putting them on after you've had a hard day or if it's just hey it's the new episode is coming out it's part of the routine I'm gonna watch it there's value to that and how it makes you feel safe but with that being said it is time for this show to end it seems to just be going along and along because it can and I think we and by we I mean the people creating the show, not me or anyone watching this, obviously, but we need to make that decision because we have to look at the show critically. Like I said, it's not as bad as people think it is, but that doesn't mean it should have a pass. Things need to be allowed to end when they should. There have been a few instances in this series, even in the later bits, that I think are good ending points, so I do think they can still do justice to a proper ending to The Simpsons if given the opportunity. And I get not wanting to. As a creator, having this outlet is a great job for them. I can see wanting to keep going. It is something stable and comfortable, and why would you wanna move away from something that is guaranteed for the strange, unsure, uncertain future that is out there. Am I making this about my personal life? No. Maybe. Anyways, what I'm getting at is I thought making this video there would be some kind of grand finale. That watching the series grow in a more condensed period of time than actually watching it as it airs would give me some great epiphany, some grand thesis I could state at the end. But I don't. It's just a show. It's got great moments. It's got nostalgic moments. It's got bad moments. It's got good moments. And I think that's enough. Because that's all The Simpsons needs to be. We don't have to push our nostalgia growing up watching the show and how it formed a lot of people in my generation's, you know, entire view on comedy and sense of humor and that is important to a lot of us but that doesn't mean that the show has to have some grand mystique to it because it's just tv this show does not need to be anything more than entertainment and i kind of expected that it would be it's a relic of a time in television that no longer exists sometimes it's good sometimes it's not sometimes it's great 
and that's all it really needs to be. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, thank you. <laughs> I worked really hard on it. I'm hoping that people enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, I've got other stuff you can check out. Please like the video, uh, leave a comment if you have any thoughts, uh, subscribe to the channel would be great. Just all kinds of things would be greatly appreciated. And until my next video comes out, have a good one.